cool. Yep, yep. Awesome, thanks. Okay, so what we wanted to do is, or the solution, the problem we tried to address is when your credit card expires, um, you have a mountain of places that you need to go update your credit card information. Um, you might have a bunch of subscriptions like Bugsnag or GitHub, um, or, and even online merchants such as Take a Lot or even Uber Eats. And trying to remember where you have your credit card information stored um, can be quite a big problem. And also it's quite a hassle to then go and update your credit card information. So our solution is basically just a little system to track where your credit card is used, which then allows you, uh, with, and it then generates a list for you um, of possible subscriptions. And then when, um, and it generates a Google Calendar reminder for you as well, whenever your credit card is expiring, so that you know um, where, you, where you need to go update your credit card and when you need to update your credit card information. The benefit of this solution is it's saving you time because you have a list of all the subscriptions or merchants where you need to go update your information. And it also helps by preventing you from missing any payments or paying fees and penalties and stuff like that how we did it, um, we used all things Google in this solution. Um, firstly, Peter created a Flask web app for us where users can sign up and that contains all the information you need to set up your own little snitch, snitch solution. All the information is stored on your own Google spreadsheet. So we don't store any of your transaction info at all. And if at any time you don't want to use the system anymore, you are welcome to just revoke the um, access on the Google spreadsheet and that's it. Um, so what we did is we created a file store which just has a user collection. Um, that's just to keep track of um, when your transactions come in, it links it to your user and to your spreadsheet, spreadsheet and sends it to you. Then we have a bunch of cloud functions, which just processes the merchant information and your credit card information. It just keeps track of your credit card, um, credit card ID and its display name. And then it processes all that information and stores it in Google Spreadsheet, which I'll show you guys in a minute. And then on top of that, we have App Script, which generates your Google Calendar reminders for you. And then we created an App Sheet solution on top of that because looking at Google Spreadsheet can be quite ugly um, and App Sheet's quite nice to look at. Cool, so when you go um, on our little website, which is part of our repo, um, you can see you can there's a link to our um, Flask app. You sign up for a user here, and then this will ha this has all the information you need. So um, it has all the instructions you need to set up your own Google Sheet ID or Google Spreadsheet. Sorry, with all the information you need, and then it has the code generated for you that you need to put on your Investec programmable banking card. And then lastly, it has everything you need to set up your own Google App Script to generate those Google Calendar reminders for you. And that is all you're going to be doing on um, our Flask app. Once you're there, it's done. That's the end of it. So now if you want to look at the spreadsheet, and I might need to zoom in here because I think my screen is huge. <laughs> um, uh, cool. So in the spreadsheet, we have a uh, we have three spreadsheets. You've got a subscriptions, not subscriptions, and a credit card list. In subscriptions, you'll see there's like a list of a bunch of subscriptions that are already came through on our credit card. Um, and there's also like not subscriptions. So this is any merchants that haven't been filtered out that might or might not be a place where you stay, um, stored your, inf your credit card information. And then you can um, manage this as you need to. And then it also has a list of all the credit cards. So you can have multiple credit cards linked to here if you need to manage a bunch of credit cards. So to show you guys how this actually works, I'm just actually going to trigger a um, transaction just straight into uh, the back end for Steam, which will come up as a subscription and it's for a brand new credit card. So it's not a, in this list yet. And there we see it just pop up. Um, so it's a Steam game, it's in an unknown category. Uh, from Hamburg, Germany, and the late of the last transaction it was. And then we also see that I now have a new um, credit card. So yeah, I can set the credit card's expiry date, which I'm just going to set to next month. 
And our um, app script actually runs every month, but for this demo, I'm just going to trigger it to run right now so that I can show you guys. I don't at the moment have any notifications for uh, expiring credit card. But after that is run, you'll see here on the 1st of August, I now have a reminder set to remind me to go update my credit card information. And it also has a list of all the trans uh, subscriptions that where this credit card has been used. Um, and this is all nice, but I mean, looking at a spreadsheet, it's not great. So we created a little um, app sheet as well. Thanks to Johan Duplessis for this. This is just a pretty way of seeing all your transactions again. So this is all your merchant information. You can click on one of them and it'll show you all the information related to that merchant um, or the other like non transactions, uh, non merchant non-subscription transactions but you can also edit these and then actually like change them to subscriptions if they are or not um, stuff like that and then you can also see a list of all your credit cards so we can see here test zero has expired already test two is nearing its expiry date that's why it's yellow and the other one is far into the future so it's not a problem and if we click on one of the cards it also gives us a list of all the merchants linked to that card and then Dupe went on a playing spree last, month, uh, last night and added a map showing us where all our transactions are from <laughs> across the globe. So thanks to Dupe for that. Um, yeah, all our, our entire project details are available on our GitHub repo, which is Gusen A forward slash snitch. Um, it also has info there if you want to set up your entire own snitch on GCP for yourself. Thanks. Thank you. Very cool. I like that whole transaction part. That's actually very cool. Any, uh, yeah, any, yeah, any questions from the community? Anything that you guys want to know or anything around there? Otherwise, is there anything that you guys would like to ask the community? Is there an ask from, a, from, from your team to the community or anything? Uh, basically just a call to action. Um, our like categorization is pretty dumb at the moment. So any, if anyone feels um, like they can help us improve the way we're categorizing it, uh, maybe like help us out with writing a classifier, that would be awesome. Um, it's an open source project. Anyone can just go create a PR, um, that'd be awesome. Henry, cool. my question was gonna be, Okay, you've just mentioned one area, the classifier for the categorization, but what, what do you what guys want to do next with this? Uh, so the big thing for us would probably be the classifier. Um, and I think Dupe also mentioned that this app isn't really scalable um, unless we um, create like an app sheet template, which you need to pay for. Um, but it would be nice to create a like mobile version um, that could be rolled out to people at large. So at the moment, if you want to create the app sheet like we did, it's, it's a bit more involved than we would like. Uh, Dupe, Peter, you guys got any comments on that? I think from our side, I think one thing that um, could be a nice um, next step um, is if we could get a, a sort of largest database of transactions, because even in um, AppSheet, there is uh, some new functionality that allows you to do sort of a predictive model. So I'd actually like to sort of see if we could leverage of that um, to do the suggestions in terms of what is a subscri subscription or not. Um, so yeah, I think that's sort of the same thing that Henri said, but I, I think we can still do quite a lot there to improve the solution. Thanks. I know that- this guy's I, super cool. Yeah, thanks. And I know that Wayne, I don't want to put him on the spot, but I know that he did mention that he was going to take a look at trying to find some anonymized data for you guys. But uh, I think that's working progress. But as soon as we get that, we'll share that with the community at large. Cool, thanks guys. Yeah, uh, that's still a work in progress. Yeah, <laughs> Much harder. Than I thought, <laughs> but we're, we're going for it. Cool, thanks, man. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, move on to the next demo. Uh, Numbuto um, from uh, Lan Bot, the conspiracy. If you guys are ready, 
Um, Nobantu. It's actually oh, Nobantu. Oh, sorry, sorry. Apologies, Nobantu. Uh, no problem. Okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tony. I'm from the Lovebot uh, Conspiracy, and I'm the working with Novanti, right? So what we came up with is a pod code ticketing system enhancement. And we actually identified that the problem that we have is that there's uh, 1,600 pod code buses in the fleet. And of the 1,600 buses, 230,000 commuters are using the buses on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Um, so with the rise in the number of COVID-19 cases, we realize that it's highly risky for commuters to be coming together as uh, in this image here to actually refill their bus tags. Um, so we decided to come up with a mobile application that will be uh, helping uh, PADCO commuters to refill their PADCO tags without having to go to the designated uh, refilling stations. So we have two buyer personas. So the first one would be Bab Chabu, who is 45 years old, who's working in Sentin. He could be spending time with his family or friends watching soccer, but he either has to spend money he could have used to buy bread to actually take a cab or walk to refill his tag. His personal motivation to actually use this product would be not waiting in long queues and lowering the risk of COVID and actually having an extra 20 bucks to spend on his kids. He would use our USSD because he doesn't have a smartphone. And then on the other side, we have Tsepiso, who is a 22-year-old who is an intern. She has a side hustle on weekends from eight to six and has, has to miss one client who could pay 300 to go to ShopRite and to refill her tag. She could be saving 40 rands and getting an extra 300 from a client. She would use our app to um, refill the tag at home. So we created two algorithms, which we hope will ultimately morph into systems that will be integrated into the PADCO ticketing system, right? Algorithm one is a USSD system and algorithm two is a mobile application. So our solutions is for commuters. Commuters can then refill their tags without having to travel to their designated refill points. The app will also record metadata concerning the geolocation of the commuters. So this information can be used um, for COVID-19 contact tracking, tracing, sorry. So there are a few things that we're able to do and also things that we would have loved to accomplish while working on the two algorithms. So we, were, we managed to create the back end for the USSD application where, where we used uh, the Python programming language. And then we also created the back end for the mobile application where we used a, a Java programming language. We also managed to create a closed uh, loop system for managing the registration for both the USSD and the mobile application. Now, the things that, on the things that we would have liked to do given maybe more time or more technical resources are the front end of the mobile application, as well as the, the APIs to check the coordinates between endpoint and the starting point of the different routes uh, that are entered by the user. We also have allowed to link bank cards to the, to the algorithm so that uh, users can authenticate or trans make transactions on the algorithm. We also would have liked to encrypt uh, the JSON file without having to maybe uh, put people's data at risk. Um, I liked uh, Ari's um, algorithm with actually used the Google API to actually not store the, the, the data in a fixed location, which we hope we'll be able to implement in the long run. Our top three challenges were calculating the distance or rather using the Google Maps API for the mobile applications and actually creating the UI as well as the unit testing. And what we are most proud of is creating a USSD using Python, which will be easier when we use the API from Africa's Talking, creating the mobile application and having source code that compiles and that can be integrated to any system and actually creating a solution that can be beneficial to commuters. I'm gonna be showing you guys a, a demonstration of the, the, the mobile application algorithm. And it's still sitting on Eclipse, but this is the same code that was uh, submitted as our report. So 
you know, want to mention that there's a user called Tepiso. So this is where she would log on, Tepi. Uh, the password would be Tepi. We can't see your screen. Oh, you can't see my screen, okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that, guys. So say so now Nobantu created a, a use case scenario where she spoke about Tepi so as an intern, right? She would be using the mobile application. So her username would be Tepi, her password would be Tepi123, and the admin password would be admin. And the admin password would be admin one. And there she'd be provided with several uh, options that she can use uh, on the app, right? So let's say she wants to add a route from uh, so okay, let's say Soweto, Soweto to Midland. And she will be filling a fast tag on a weekly basis. And there the, the, the algorithm returns that the, 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 the route to Midland has been stored. Now let's say Tepiso comes in again on uh, Monday morning to, to check if she has trips still in her, in her tag. She enters her username again. She enters the, her password, Tepi12, incorrect password. Let's see if we enter it again, Tepi, Tepi123. And there we go, Tepi so is able to log in and the, oh, the password has been created. Now she can view her routes that she already entered on the program. And there they are, starting point will be so wait on the tag term is weekly. So, over to you, Navandu. Okay, can you go back to the slides? So, our call um, for action would be we need to join forces with senior devs who can help us write tests for our algorithms, as well as front end devs who can help us create a U U UI. We will be able to host our prototype for a trial of 90 days. Thank you so much for the time, guys, and we really appreciate you listening to our presentation. And this is the part where we will be taking questions. Any questions from the community, from attendees? Yeah, one from me. Um, uh, Guys, what was the what was the biggest lessons that you that you learned through the through the process? Uh, probably not from a technical perspective, but just from the pro the whole process. It'll be interesting to to hear. Yeah. Um. So, I, for my side, I think the the biggest thing that I've learned from this project is the the, the detrimental socioeconomic factors that. Uh, people have to experience by having to travel to and from the, the, the designated uh, part code type refilling stations. For instance, we, um, single parents or single mothers or fathers have to find somebody who's going to stay behind with their children while they go to the tag refilling stations, which is an additional expense. I also realized that another situation would be where the, the, the overall cost on average to travel to and from the, the designated tag refilling stations in a month could amount to 300 rand. And if you can look at that 300 rand and how much it's actually worth to low income earning households, it's actually enough to possibly buy enough electricity for a week or two or bread or meal and meal or things like that, you know? So if there's anything that I, I, I would say I've learned from the, from the project or from the hackathon is that there are a lot of socioeconomic factors which uh, bringing this app to fruition could solve. A great answer. Thanks, man. I also had a question, Claudia Navanta. That's very, very cool. Um, I really like your idea. Um, I just wanted to know a little bit more about how you came up with the idea. Like, did you speak to a lot of people? Did you do any customer development? Um, how did you How did you know about this and decide this was what you wanted to do? Um, I was actually accompanying Shoni to actually refill his tag. And we actually started asking questions that, okay, we have to drive to ShopRite. Is there any other way to actually refill your tag? And he said, there is no other way. So we actually stood in line for like 20 minutes to actually um, refill the tag, whereby there was no social distancing. 
and there was um yeah a, a line so we actually started to think that if there is no other way then we should come up with something that we can use and then we started doing um a survey to people who actually use um Patco, um buses to say how long do they spend in a weekend to stand in line to refill their tags how much do they spend um on money to actually travel from one point to another so that's how we came up with this solution thanks that's super cool very cool thanks guys uh any questions i'm sure that they would love to hear them in uh, the chat or on the slack group uh, if there's anything else guys please reach out to them uh, i love their solution it's a human problem first approach which is really cool cool um if there's anything else i'd like to move on to the next demo uh so ushek from bits and bytes if you guys are ready hey can you hear me yeah can you I'm just going to try projecting my screen. So, um, can you hear me? Can you see my screen? Perfect. Can you hear you? Can okay, you so yeah. this is Project Incentive. Um, part of the team members are Yusha, Guran, and Yashik. That's me. Uh, so, basically, we wanted to create uh, an app to electively reward recognition in a team. So the app is basically to reward an employee of the month. It's a fun way to demonstrate the power of uh, programmable banking with automated uh, transactions. And uh, basically we wanted to demonstrate two keys, two areas such as automation and not just uh, debit card automation uh, or monthly debit automation, but basically you can control where your debits go to I think that, that flexibility is very important and also the scalability of your transactions. But um, so if you want to spend or if your transactions want to be scaled by 80%, 100%, 20%, 20%, that's also the power that this programmable banking brings. Um, so the project was developed using React, Node.js, and uh, MongoDB. So the problem. So this was from the first step of the problem. So basically companies are looking for a way to recognize how to reward uh, employees and uh, to be able to electively uh, select them. And the solution is to create an app to allow teams to add members and to select an employee of the month. So the auto pay is uh, pretty important to the solution. So on the 24th of every month, um, the the user with the highest votes will be rewarded the employee of the month and, and automatically paid. So some of the benefits is that it's a fun way to reward valuable employees. And it's a it's another it's a simple way to demonstrate uh, key capabilities of programmable banking. So some of the features of the project, um, the basic features, user sign up and login. Um, then we have user voting. So each person will be able to vote once. Um, winner history. So you can go into your, your card and uh, get information on how much money was paid to each employee. Um, payment automation. Currently, there's no full API developed to automate payments uh, on a monthly basis. So we use the simulator and uh, email notification. Uh, so one of the key ideas was to push boundaries of programmable banking and see what kinds of use, use cases we can get out of it. Um, so how it works basically is um, the React.js library is used to develop the user interface. This connects to the Node.js server, which exposes the REST API to provide functionality such as the user sign up and login, uh, voting capability, history of employee of the month, uh, remuneration, based on employee for the highest votes and um, utilization of the Investec Open API to extract history. Um, from there, so once a transaction is simulated in this uh, app, an email notification is sent to the, to the winner to notify, notify them that uh, they've actually won. So just a high level overview of um, some of 
the features from the app. So basically each user will be able to create their account. We use superheroes for this demo. Um, so because we have superheroes in the workspace, um, each user will be able to log in. Each user will be able to share to see the board of um, who's who's winning the employee of the month. Um, this is this is just the demonstration of the simulation of uh, the payment. And uh, right here at the bottom right, you can see the code for the email to be sent. And there's the email. So this month, Wonder Woman had one. And of course, you can also see the history of um, who's won for the past um, 180 days currently available by the Investec app APIs. Um, so now I'm just going to go through the actual demo of the app. I'm not going to do this, uh, the sign up. I'm just going to go log in. At email, email.com. Hi, so I own main. <laughs> so as I mentioned, um, each um, each member is available on the uh, on the board, and each user will only be able to allow, uh, to vote once. But um, we left it open at the moment for demonstration purposes. So if I want to vote for Gandalf, and you can see he becomes the employee of the month at the first of July. Um, Still, still got some time in the month for some other people to catch up. So you can add more, more members to this team, basically. And this is the history of the employee of the month. So as I mentioned earlier, um, scalability of your payment transactions is pretty important. So how we use this is that um, each, each member, each winner is paid the percentage of votes that they got for the month. For example, if um, there were 10 votes and if Captain America won by nine votes and your maximum amount was a thousand rand, they would get 900 rand. So that's the example to go through this. And um, I think that's the main things from this application and when uh, a transaction is simulated, basically they will get an email stating that they have won. So some of the challenges encountered. Um, so we needed to simulate the transaction. Um, API and documentation, I think we, uh, we found a few gaps where we can improve, I think. Um, and locking the account. Uh, next step. So updating user profile configurations, banking details configurations. So if someone changes banks or if banking details need to be updated. Um, another cool, cool uh, feature we wanted to add was the investic share allocation of a term employer of the month and hosting the solution on cloud infrastructure. Mm, that's it. Are there any questions? Uh, I gotta say, I really so, love um, the UI was very really cool. Sorry. No, sorry, Nick. No, I was just gonna say the two things from my side, which I think would be quite cool, is um, just creating a Slack app around it. I think so many companies use Slack app. I mean, they have a couple million users. So I think it would just be an easy, like, friction point to get rid of. And two, Instead of collecting the um, banking details, what would be cool is actually, I know just because Investix working on it, is actually to send a virtual card to the employee of the month instead of collecting their bank details. Um, so yeah, just cool. some views from my side, yeah. Mm, that sounds cool. And then use Anri's tool to tell you when your virtual card's going to expire. <laughs> yeah, we'll integrate with them. Yeah. Yeah, we're well, liking the collaboration here yeah, already. It's very cool. <laughs> cool. Uh, anything else? Any other? Anyone else has some comments? Any questions? Cool. Guys, again, you can continue the chat if you have any questions about this or to any of the team members. Please feel free to use the chats or Slack groups to kind of just getting yeah, get in contact with them. Cool. So our next team is 
think there's insert name. I think they forgot to put in a name. <laughs> so, uh, uh, no. how <laughs> <laughs> so so adam hugs and that old team there if you guys if you guys are ready yeah the the insert name here is by design there's no such no mistakes okay <laughs> uh, cool cool uh everyone see my screen yes cool uh, i'm just trying to figure out how to get rid of this thing Make me joke. There we go. Cool. Um, okay, cool. So, everyone start with the presentation. I think we should do the same. Um, yeah, so our project's called Trophies. And as Nick said, we are team insert name here. Uh, consists of Adam, uh, who's, you can read his title there, uh, and myself, Agashin affectionately known as Hugs. Um, Jared, who was just, uh, yeah, an amazing, uh, amazing support in the project and did a lot of, a lot of the stuff that um, Adam and Peter and I were not good at. Um, and Peter, who did uh, quite a bit of the, the front end stuff uh, for us. So our mission was to, essentially we, we had this idea that there are so many open source projects out there and so many startups and often what happens is people contribute to an open source project. Uh, they do it for a while and then they either, you know, move on to something else or just don't have the time to do it anymore. And then that project becomes successful or gets funding. And what ends up typically happening is only the people who are active at that time um, benefit from that funding. And it's very similar in the startup world where you may join a, a startup and when you join, they're not making any money. Uh, they haven't you know, you know, made it big yet. And you make a lot of contributions to it. And at some point you leave that, that, that organization and maybe a year or two later, they become really successful and your contribution is, is not seen. So we, we said, well, what if there was a mechanism that allowed contributions to be persistent for the sake of, of which is a problem. And so the solution we came up with was to be able to have a, a sort of ledger of all contributions made into a, a particular project, whether it be open source or, or startup. And for that contribution to then be actualized at some point when, when funding is made available. Right. And for that to then be fair and transparent at the time, so that it wasn't a case of, well, you know, I contributed X and because I'm the current person who's contributing, I should make more out of it than somebody who contributed Y three years ago. So, um, yeah. So this is the basic sort of idea behind it is you would have developers contributing to a project. They would earn what we've effectively called trophies. And at some point, those trophies would be redeemed for cash. Okay, I'm not gonna play the video because we're gonna go through the demo. Let me just stop that there. Okay. Um, Okay, so we broke this down into a few different aspects. So there's what we call the trophies manager, um, which has its own, own set of, um, yeah, so this is the, the, the various sort of components of it. There's, there's the trophy manager, which handles everything to do with uh, trophy management. So creating projects, issuing tokens, claiming those tokens, uh, how much, uh, money is being allocated to, to that particular project, um, et cetera. And then we've got what we call the trophy feeder, which is a uh, um, leverages of uh, a project that Adam and I worked on previously, which was called Budgie. Um, and it basically allows you to use the transactions out of an investec account to 
feed a project with money. So it would be something where someone would basically deposit money into some, some investing account, you would run the feeder and it would then take that money and allocate it out um, to that project. <coughs> and I mean, I don't have uh, open which was the mobile app which is basically the trophy profile uh portal sorry and that's sort of where you can go and add new projects uh see the state see how many tokens are issued for that project see how many funds are there um etc so cool so for the purpose of this demo we we leveraged um GitLab's uh, push events or their web hooks and, and the push events particularly. Uh, so basically can set this up Yeah, Should, okay, cool. So this is the trophies portal um, where you basically log in and register. Cool. And you get a list of projects. Um, you can create a project. So we'll go through that. Here's one that we, we did for the purpose of this little demo. And essentially, the the trigger works off this um, the project ID and this key. Uh, so 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 you use the project ID in here, and this is basically a Amazon uh, Lambda uh, endpoint. Um, that's the token there. Um, <clears throat> and basically what this does is it allows for every time a push is made into a particular branch, in this case, the master branch, um, an event will be fired off to this endpoint uh, with that push events details, which will then be used by the um, the GitLab integration to yeah. so it's used by this project to pick it up and process that. And the processing of that is base basically hinges off um, this Sophie's tracking file, which indicates who needs to get the, the trophies, why they need to get it, and how many trophies they need to get. So if we were to see this in action, yeah, yeah so I made a branch. So if we look here, there's currently 11 trophies issued. So let's just change something in here. Yeah, so this, Probably should have been something like project ID. Oh, and look that. Cool, oh, my commit's made. And go back and create a merge request. Um, so, in the typical sort of flow of, of development, what would normally happen is We'd need approvers to come in and do approval of the merge requests, check that everything is, is good, and also at the same time validate that the number of trophies that someone's requesting for a particular piece of work is worth what they've um, what they've allocated. So you know, I changed a couple of characters in a file, and if I'm requesting ten trophies for that, it would be a little bit ridiculous. So it's it's sort of a, a check mechanism um, within this. So for the purpose of this, we'll just create the merge request. We'll merge it in. A few seconds. Cool. That's the merge in. So we can back up here. That that's been changed. And if we go to the refresh on this page, we can see that that hook just fired. And do a little refresh here, we can see that that trophy was issued. And I don't put it, 
don't know what the justification was, but I. Um, and then you'll also get an email. So let me just grab that quickly. Cool. Oh, so there's an email saying that, hey, you've gotten a copy issued. There we go. Got that piece. So once we have trophies and projects and everything is set up, that means people are happily getting trophies. The next thing everyone's going to be interested in as well, we need to be able to get money into this project. So if we go back, we can see there's currently 2,000 USD assigned to it, magic. Um, and so we've got the trophy feeder. We just give it a run. And it's successfully allocated another thousand dollars. Yay, magic money. Love it. Cool. Um, and so now there's funds allocated. Uh, obviously, once funds are allocated, the next thing someone's going to want to do is actually claim one of their trophies. Let's just find one, grab that one, maybe. And so if you just redeem yours, put them for the bank account here. Uh, There we go. Cool. Congratulations. Your money is on its way. And there will also be an email shortly. There we go. Cool. So there's an email telling the owners of the project that um, somebody's made a claim and we need to authorize that, that claim. Again, just another sort of check mechanism to make sure that things don't get out of hand. And then there's the email to the person who actually made the claim, telling them, this is the claim you've made, this is the trophy, this is the amount, et cetera. Um, yeah, and essentially the sort of next, what we would have obviously liked to have done is um, had some sort of either virtual card uh, API or, or payments API, which would then be able to automate that that payment out once the authorization um, was actually done. But that that's a future thing. We're also thinking about how this could potentially make its way onto uh, the blockchain as well. So yeah, for anyone who's interested, you can head over to. Um, Slack channel. There's a Slack channel called Insert Name here. I think thing. Um, this is a GitLab repository. It's got a full sort of description of what the, the project's aiming for, like how we're going to do calculations or how, how calculations are done. That's it. So, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, I don't think I missed anything, Adam. Uh, no, I think uh, I think you covered everything. Uh, just a note that. Uh, all contributions will not just be appreciated, but will also be incentivized by trophies. Um, yes. And we are hoping for those trophies to be valuable as we go forward. Sounds very yes. cool. Any uh, questions from anyone else? Any sort of or comments or thoughts? Very first thoughts on this project? I think it's very cool, but that's just me. Marco? Yeah, I think it's awesome. Um, I kind of post in the chat as well as speaking, uh, but it seems like you guys are aware. I think open source um, and like rewarding the community for what they're doing uh, is awesome. It's obviously how you get faster development. Um, I don't know if you give feedback on the code, but um, two things I just noticed in the code, um, take it if you want to, but um, I saw that you use promises, like it makes the code quite messy and hard to read. I think it's easy to use async and awaits, um, but I do understand it's hackathon. Um, and then the second thing I saw you use CDK, which is obviously Amazon's infrastructure's code and using Lambda. So I would potentially just look at using service.com just because then you don't get vendor lock-in. Not that it's an issue, but just something to consider maybe if you ever think about moving cloud platforms, but you're otherwise awesome project. One thing to, to note about uh, CDK um, is that uh, HashiCorp has now created uh, CDK TF. And so it works exactly the same as CDK, oh. but there's no vendor lock-in. So to port a solution to that is, is not a problem. Oh, awesome. Thanks. Right. So largely, I mean, we do have a, a larger architectural like design for where we're going. Um, I mean, really like Peter is amazing. He literally figured out Vue 
on the weekend and built it in like a few days or a few hours we had like so like we're really proud of him so like obviously the promise comment makes sense but for long term when it actually gets rolled out um those are the types of things that you know we're going to be addressing we're actually oh, no, no that was a personal attack jerry that was about my code <laughs> was it, oh, was it your code as well damn nice yeah, yeah. I have no Adam, excuses. I'm moving towards AC. Don't have, worry. You have no excuses then. Sorry, Adam. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you guys can like join up on trophies.dev. Um, and then we plan on actually releasing a project that we're going to open up to the community to actually be incentivized and use our software to obviously be part of um, like an equity pool for the venture. Ideally, obviously, this is where we, we're going to try our best to get there. But all of us have day jobs. So this is kind of the idea of like, incentivizing the community to be part of that. Very cool. Thank you. And uh, Adam, if you want, I can set up a parking lot visit for you guys. I'll do a breakout room and you guys can have a chat there about anything. Awesome. <laughs> okay, Thanks, cool. Nick. <laughs> cool. And then just uh, moving on to the next, if there's nothing else, guys, please, again, reach out to them. They're doing some very cool work around uh, here. So we would love to get them just, uh, you know, up and running. Uh, next up, we have uh, Devandran's team. Uh, C is tech, if you guys are ready. Uh, uh, oh. Amanda, hey. Um, hi, everyone. Just let me know if um, you can see my screen. Perfect. Can see. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so, evening, everybody. I will be walking you through what our solution is and what our problem statement is. Um, so programmable banking um, was initially built for developers, which, may, which meant excluding other communities. Our mission was to change that narrative, which is why we are introducing CardGuard. So what is CardGuard? CardGuard is a user interface that brings rules engine to the masses via programmable banking. It empowers non-technical users to apply card transaction rules through programmable banking. Currently, we are focusing on one objective, and that is to decline a card transaction if it doesn't meet the defined criteria or rule. So how does it work? CardGuard allows you to enable and disable card transactions on your card based on rules you create without having to write code. You can create rules for transaction types, transaction amounts, transaction categories, transaction currencies, etc. I will be handing over to Urkit, who will walk you through how to, um, who will walk you through the technical details of our solution. Hi, um, should I just share my screen? Yeah. Yeah. Where do I share screen? You can't, okay. Okay, let's try again. Share. Okay, so I'm um, just talking about our high level uh, architecture. So we've, we've got a, API talking to the Investec um, service. So the Investec service only has a listener. It's a web book that calls our API and our API just tells it yes or no. Okay, the rules get supported to the API via Angular front end and the data sits on a Cosmos database. Okay, at the moment, when the user registers, they'll get their card secret from the Investec site. They'll add their secret to their profile and future login, they can just use a simple auth at the moment. It's just, uh, I didn't have time to do anything fancy there. Um, <clears throat> and then, then they can kind of um, add to their arts content. I don't know, um, do you guys want to see it in action? Or I think I've yeah, if we here. can see it in action, that would yeah, be cool. Yeah. Okay, Zebra, okay. So, um, okay, just go login. So I'm going to go um, we, uh, to Vendron. Yeah, we can't see your screen. We can just see the diagram at the moment. 
Oh, sorry, I have one second. Okay, so um, can you guys see now? Uh, see now? Yes, perfect. Okay, great. Okay, um, so using the Vendrin's um, account for this. Okay, just waiting for that login, waiting for the API service to spin up. We did use Azure Functions, which is a, um, a code less type solution. Okay, let's go to rules, add new rule. Okay, let's see, currency code needs to contain czar, save it. Okay, maybe um, merchant city does not contain rock bank, save. And this gets fed to the API, and whenever a swipe happens, these rules get validated against the amount or, or, or anything, and then the card will return, return a true and a false, where you can disable your rules. So that's, that's the, the basic gist of it. Any questions about the, the architecture or, or the site? Cool. Um, I think um, we'll hand over to Devendran, who will actually walk us through a live scenario of setting up a rule and um, seeing what happens after that rule has been applied by shopping online. Is Devandran, is his audio working? I don't think his audio is working, or maybe it's just that me. This is Amanda, can okay, you? Okay, Devandran, um, I can talk while while you're you're creating a rule. I'll just keep an eye out. Cool. Okay, so how this work is um, you go to rules, um, you can create, well, firstly, he's disabling the rule that was created before by ORCID, and he's going to create a new rule um, for a transaction amount that contains, um, a, well, that has a value greater than, um, that is one rent. So our values are currently in cents. Um, I think for future, we will look at um, changing that to a higher value. So now he's done that, he's saved the rule, he's going to take a lot to do shopping to buy um, a Vodacom airtime voucher of two rents. Um, the, hundred, the hundred cents is actually one rent. So let's see what happens. Okay, he's going to select the card he just configured. And make the payment. <laughs> cool. There's authenticating. Okay. Yeah, obviously it's authenticating. Um, we'll see what happens in the next screen. And um, sure, okay, takes a while. All right, um, as you can see, he tried to make a, a purchase of two rents, but the amount that he configured was he wanted, um, he didn't want transactions that were above one rent, which is why the two rent has been declined. 
Um, I think, Devendran, um, if you can show us um, the next test case where you can disable this 100 rand transaction amount and show us one which will allow you to actually make a purchase. Okay, he's updated that to 300 cents, which is three rands, and he's going to make a payment. And he will go through the same process of authenticating, and he will actually show us what it looks like. Okay, so 60 seconds. Let's give it a few more minutes. Uh, yeah, I really love that you guys are using an actual shop, so. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And the purchase. Is, um, yay. Cool. Um, so, um, as you can see, this is the rule that we built um, to handle just um, that card decline transaction. Obviously, we have um, quite a few future features that we want to incorporate, which is um, we've got an initial suggested rule template that um, in future we would like to incorporate into our solution. Um, we would like to be able to perform our analytics on, you know, allow you to perform analytics on your card on all the rules that you've, you've performed against your card. And um, we've got a list of Investec suggested blacklist entries, um, which we would also like to, to incorporate into this. Um, and this will help you when you, when you want to make certain payments or when you're shopping. Um, if these people have been flagged, it will be something that you can, um, well, the, the app can automatically tell you that um, you're making a risky payment or a risky purchase. Cool. Um, and uh, we do have, um, let me just share quickly, we do have a Q&A section on our website. Well, not a Q&A section, we do have, do you want to share for me, Devendran? Sorry. Um, we have a, a frequently asked section on our website uh, where you can find additional details if you've got any questions, uh, but we'll be taking additional questions in this section also. That's cool. When are you shipping it? <laughs> as soon as possible. <laughs> We've demonstrated that you can actually start building your rules against um, the little prototype that we've done. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the community? Oh, sorry. Cool. Um, Josh, uh, Jared, Ben, any, uh, any questions from your side? You good, mate? You put me on the spot there. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sorry. <laughs> um, what do you guys want to be? What do you want to be adding to this app, or um, what kind of? I guess that's one question. The other question would be, um, what kind of users do you have in mind? Like your first segment of users, or those things you've thought about. Um, okay, do you want to answer that? Sorry, sorry, I didn't catch it. Um, have you had any thoughts about what you would want to add to this app, or how you would want to extend it? And have you had any thoughts around um, a segment of users that could be like a, a good segment for early adopters um, or an interesting segment? At the moment, our initial idea was to, is everyone with a, an account, okay, should have access to this some, some way. We need to market it on some kind of way, maybe discuss it with the Investec, um, with Investec if we can maybe hook in to them and they can maybe Maybe we can have a look at that. Otherwise, maybe maybe like Google Ads or something to get to get people to come in and join this. Okay, but it, but it, there's a lot of there's a lot of things we can do with, with this because essentially it's that hook sitting inside the API. We can we can stop and start a lot of things um, from there. Yeah, 
and obviously our, our target our target audience for this solution is is anybody really you don't really have to be yes. technical yeah. to use our solution because um we you know we write the code behind it all you have to do is use the GUI to to just configure so um i think you know a smaller set of people will be a great start for us to get this started um also to to test and see what are the frequently asked things or what you know frequently configured rules um and then we can add these to our suggested template based on um what gets configured frequently yeah. oh makes sense if, if, really well if done, i can guys. just also if i can just as just also add on that um with the ability to configure rules, we can make an example, you know, for security purposes, where maybe you would only want your card to be used in a particular uh, town. For an example, say you can only use your card in Centurion. Uh, that way you can prevent things like your card being used when you are hijacked, for example, to say, if it's used in Johannesburg, then those uh, transactions should be declined. So there's many things that you can add um, on the on the rule sets, so that's that's, right. that's one example. example. Yeah. We did talk about doing templates, like like Amanda said. With there are some basic rules you can add, like your card can't be used like between twelve and six in the morning. Items like it can't be used without outside of South Africa unless it's during this time. So there are some templates and things we could do that will just give us easy wins for whoever signs up for this. Yeah, yes. that's cool. We will share the one all the quick. Topics. Yeah, sorry, please. Hmm? No, so I was going to ask. I mean, when you start writing this out, what do you think the revenue model will look like? Do you think you'll pay it per per user per card, or do you think you'll take a percentage of transactions that are executed? Just interested to know if you thought about it or still early days. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Hey, hey Dave. Hey. Sorry, sorry. Just sorry about the audio. Uh, to change mics um yeah but we haven't given much thoughts into the, the actual uh, revenue model um the initial uh aim is to get it to as many people who can benefit from it uh, i think later on uh, we'll try to figure out how to monetize it but for now if it can help people um yeah i think that's the that's the real win so thank you very much uh I think uh, we will share the contact details and all the details of the team's uh, post a post a post this event. But let me just have a sip of water before I start the winners. So cool, cool. But uh, who won? That's really the thing. So uh, everyone who submitted a uh, submission will get a hackathon whole offers in mug. Uh, ben will recognize that hand because that's his hand. So, so hey. everyone, <laughs> sorry, that's, that's copyrighted. <laughs> Do you mean? So there's the yeah. So we sorted that out. Uh, so everyone who submitted will get an a offers in mug. But there are some prizes to be won, some winners to be told. So let's dig into that one. Okay. So. There was a project that we really loved and we really loved the passion of that project uh, that they did, but they didn't quite integrate the programmable banking side of it. And this is the Investec programmable banking whole hack, the whole hack, the whole hackathon. Uh, but we really loved that the project talked to the social side of, of why we're doing stuff, of why we're producing and why we're building. And we love the passion that they showed. And when you see their video, you'll see the passion that they had for whatever they did. So what they win is one, the community love, because they gave back to the community rather than just, just, just taking. And then also we want to give them some uh, swag as, yeah, as a reward for that. They didn't win the prizes, but they won our hearts, essentially. So that... Winner is the love, the love, the love, the love bot guys. Um, really well done, guys. We really loved your ideas, your solutions. So congratulations on that one. And we'll be in contact around there. So well done. Thank you. Not Thank you so much. Cool. Uh, we will take a big picture later on, but getting on with it. So the fourth prize, the winner of the fourth prize is Bits and Bytes. 
guys, congratulations. We really loved how you guys put, you know, how you put your solution together. We loved everything about it. So thank you very much for submitting that. So bits and bytes, well done, guys. Thank you. You can celebrate later. Cool. Then moving on to the third place, guys. They win 10,000 Rand. Uh, we are getting to that now. Uh, and winner is da -da -da -da, CS Tech. Well done, guys. So you won the prize. Congratulations. That's awesome. You, congratulations. You won third prize. We really loved how you guys put together that solution, what you know, the rules based, the thinking of it, and just the because that low code uh, way to, to uh, democratize the programmable banking cards and the rules around it. So that was very cool. So well done, guys. Then the second place, guys. So we're down to two. So who's it going to be? So we're down to two people now. So any bets? I'm taking bets on the side. Let me just take a sip, a sip of water. And I'll figure this one out. Okay. Ready for number two? Is da -da -da, snitch. Well done, Snitch. A very cool solution that you guys did. Very awesome. We loved it. Uh, the way that you guys just brought it out. You use both low code, the, the thinking that you approach. So very cool, guys. So Snitch won uh, the second place. So of course, that means the winners, the number ones for this hackathon for this quarter. Remember, we'll be keep doing this every quarter. But for this quarter is, of course, I need to get the name because I keep saying insert name here. So... Con uh, you, know, you know, congratulations, guys. Uh, winner, winner, whole chicken dinner. Okay. Cool. If you guys want, if we can. Is Adam not going to say anything? Adam's looking, like you saw him getting a little nervous. I there. was just uh, <laughs> yelling a little bit with mute on. So for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay! 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 Awesome. Guys, if well we done, can. Well Redemption. Done. Redemption, Adam. Redemption. Redemption. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. If we can, I would really love if we can switch on our cameras. I know if, because if you can, they'll be really cool. If we can take a big group photo, essentially, of this hackathon, uh, we'll talk a bit more about it now. But I just want to get that happiness. I want to capture that exuberance that you guys have at the moment around it. So that would be really cool. So He's too bad you on this one. You get a trophy, and you get a trophy. Yeah, yeah. Everybody gets. <laughs> yeah, everyone gets trophy. Like the Venus balloon, there. you must keep it in the picture, right? Eh? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> cool. I'll take two pictures. One, I think, uh, I think Anri is used to this uh, thing. So if you can hold on something, <laughs> okay, cool. Hey, Luther's ready. Hey, 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 man. Okay, one, two, three. Take one. Awesome. And we'll take another one. One, two, three. Cool. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. So that's the winners of those hackathons, but it doesn't end there. It gets better. And I know it's hard to believe, but it does get better. So a special thank you to our judges who are really putting the time, the efforts, the experience, and the knowledge, as, as, and kind of as you heard uh, tonight. So there was Aurelian... Uh, and Henny and uh, Marco, who really gave up their time experience on the weekend. I, you know, I was harassing them on a Saturday morning and harassing them on a Sunday and just harassing them for days on end. So to get scores and work and kind of work out. So th guys, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. And you'd make special kind of special note and notice that two, that two of the judges are the community members. They are people we are within the community. And one Henny Spies is our developer relations person in Investec. So guys, thank you very much for, for your time and your effort that you spent here. We will send you gifts, gifts and hugs. And as soon as COVID allows, I'll give you a big hug. Okay. Thank you. Thank you guys. And then of course, before we forget, big thank you very much to the entire community. Guys, everyone who got involved, the guys who really put in submissions, who took the time to just ask to build things, to get things done. We really, from the bottom of my heart, and I know from the bottom of everyone's heart, just thank you very much for participating in this. We hope that you learned stuff, that we hope that you just built some cool uh, 
you just built some cool uh, relationships. I've gotten text messages from people who are saying they're a stronger team now, that they're a better team now. So we really hope that that continues with these board cycles that we are doing at the moment. And I know that Davina is just itching to say some, some uh, words. She <laughs> loves this community. So uh, Davina. Yeah. Hi, Ben. Um, and um, Nick and Aretha Hello. and um, Henny and Dwayne and uh, the Johans from the API team and Ernie, I know all of our guys from Investec and OfficeN who are here today. I think on behalf of everyone, I think I just want to say thank you to the entire community. I think um, my daughter's holding a little love balloon here, but it's just, it's really just to, to say like we really do appreciate the time and and I think I want to give a big shout out to everybody who's contributed especially during this time um I know as a country we are in the midst of the third wave and I'm very conscious that at a very human level um there are many people that are giving their time and um in, in a in like a very special way to this community even when times are really really tough um if you anything like um, some of the Investec teams, we have many people who are sick during this time, um, dealing with, I think, helping out family who are sick. Um, and so everybody's stretched quite, I think, mentally and physically. And so to have, I think, this amount of people join the, the meetup um, and contribute, I think just from a, a, a thinking and creativity perspective has been amazing. As always, I'm like truly inspired, I think, in terms of coming to the meetup and seeing the, the caliber of creativity. And I think there isn't a single um, uh, contribution or a, a project that, that was shown today that doesn't have some legs in real life in terms of what we, what we want to do. Um, I think our challenge in, in the community this year is, is how do we make sure that from an Investec perspective and OfficeN perspective, we support you guys more um, and um, and transition, I think a lot of the projects that we are seeing um, into becoming more scalable. And so just from my side, I just wanna let everybody know that is a big um, part of our work this year. And um, something that's truly exciting that I think I just wanted to let everybody in the community know is that from an Investec perspective, we've um, um, just signed on from a, from a a collaboration with OfficeN um, perspective in terms of a more longer term partnership. Um, everyone at Investec from a strategic perspective is seeing this as a huge strategic in, um, and very valuable part of making open banking a reality in South Africa. So um, we could never have done it without you guys. And I think um, over the course of the next month or so, um, we want to put something together from a community perspective to say thank you to you guys because we are um, going to be out of the beta soon and, and literally live. And I hope that, that we um, as Investec um, are able to kind of say really a big thank you to everybody. Um, this hackathon and this bull cycle has been, I think, special to us just because it's, you know, there are many people, I think, who are taking strain during this time. And so to see this level of effort has been amazing. So thank you once again. Here's a really, really love balloon from all of us. And, um, and we really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. It's still a lovely words. And I think that speaks to everything that we've been trying to do as a community. And thank you, guys. So what did we learn? So that's really the critical part. So this community is, is really about learning, giving back, and just to listen, to observe, and to give. So our lessons that we learned at this uh, whole hackathon are numerous, but I'll give the highlights, essentially. So the one thing that we really wanted to do, as Davina just pointed out, is that it's a more human thing to do now is just to have those one-on-one -on -one chats with everyone. And that's what we started off with and what we wanted to do from the beginning, that we didn't want to just send a, a whole mailer out to say, hey guys, there's a hackathon, attend, whatever. We wanted to connect with you one-on-one. -on -one. So we picked up a phone. We talked to every single person that we could get hold of from the community. And a number of you know that I've been 
phone hey, I've been phoning you guys. We've all been phoning hey, phoning you guys. So just so just getting that connection and just talking with another human being really was fun and was really a, a great thing to do. Uh, then we also found that the group ideation, the all sessions that we had, while hey, while they were crazy and really you know just just running around fun it really brought home the fact that developers and us we just want to talk to other people about our passion we just want to get people connecting and talking so that's a whole theme that we brought across in this whole hackathon is just ways in which we can talk to one another then we did these whatsapp groups these slack groups uh, where we found that while slack was cool to put stuff in it was the whatsapp groups that really had the connection where you, where you really found on a Saturday night, a dev had a problem with code and someone said, hey, I'll pick up a Google, you know, meet and I'll help you out quick, you know, a random sort of thing. So that's really cool. And that's brought up that connection again of just a community of just people trying to build really cool things together. And another one was the feedback that Wayne and uh, that Davina gave to the teams. So all the teams had an a opportunity to uh, have one-on-one uh, -on -one chats with the Investec team uh, directly on anything that they wanted to ask about. And also as a mentorship sort of sense check around what they were doing. Wayne and Davina and, and a number of the Investec product team guys gave really good help to these teams. And I think that really showed, that showed the heart in everything that we're trying to do. So that so for me, that was very cool. Then, of course, our judges. Our judges were coming from the community itself. Because again, how we want to build out this community, and as Davina mentioned, it's a long-term thing. We want to make sure that this community isn't just a driven thing by someone else, that it's driven by the community. So the same thing that what, what is that name of that uh, team, that insert name team, keep forgetting their name. So I keep saying, keep saying insert name. They're running with the project and, and they're calling community, they're getting community involved. They're really doing very cool things around it. So that's what we want to get to is that we simply are hey, of a space for you guys to build really cool things. And we support that. So those are the main learnings around what we took away from the hackathon that human touch, connecting with one-on-ones, with other developers. And there were some bad points. There were some good points to all of this. We're taking those lessons with you with us to our next cycle that we're going to be doing. So remember that we're starting off with these board cycles. So we've done our demo now. Now it's Wayne who's going to be all talking. And I know he's sick and I apologize. I'm picking on him a lot. So I'm um, apologies, Wayne. But Wayne will talk us through on the 29th of July at the next meetup. He will talk us through what, you know, what Investec bought for quarter two and what, and what their plans are for the next quarter three. Then we will have another meetup around the ideations of coming up with some cool ideas, just getting community around that. And then our third meetup, the same one that we've been doing now also, is just, just to show that demo to get involved and do really cool uh, things. Um, so that's our plan. How are we going to board this out? We would really love to get your feedback around it. Uh, do we do another hackathon like this? Do we do a hack day? Do we do a, a community project? You know, how do we do this? So we're going to be coming up with some plans around that. We will let you guys know uh, how you know, that's going to plan out and all of that. But as long as we have some more time to do it, because this hackathon, we had very little time. Everyone will attest. We kind of just put it together. We tested it. We bought it. And we are iterating as we go. So that's our plan. So. Guys, we would really love your feedback. We will pop this feedback into the chat also. Uh, it's feedback around the hackathon, your experience. If you were involved, if you weren't involved, if you were thinking about getting involved, um, we would really love your feedback. And then any other thoughts that you want? Because again, we, I'm going to harp on this like until the end of time. We brought in this with you know with you guys for you guys. So please let us know what you know what you want. And we have the time and thank you to, to Investec. We have the money and the backing and the technical skills to do that for you. Um, cool. Uh, anything, did I miss anything? Any questions? I'm not looking at the chats at the moment. Cool. I think everybody's uh, there, Shane. 
thanks Nick too, because I think thanks Nick and Ben and the Offersend team for running this thing so smoothly. It was yeah. quite amazing. I think the quality of everything is just improving every time. I was quite flabbergasted. So I'm really impressed with everything that was shown tonight. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Uh, yeah, this is all done out of love and uh, and everyone, Ben, we're building on what he's been doing for for months and months on end. So well done. And and you know how it goes. You uh, you uh, board on the shoulders of gi of uh, bigger people. So thank you very much, guys. Thanks, guys. It means a lot. But Nick, I'm just like so proud of what you've done. Um, the amount of people that have shown up for this and the quality and everyone the like quality of the apps. Um, I set up like most of the apps while I was watching. Just incredible. So yeah, really well done, Nick. I mean, <laughs> we jumped in, in this halfway through the quarter and you like pulled it off. And it's like the bit, it's taken it to another level. So it's just like incredible. I'm Thank super you. excited for next quarter. Yeah, me too. I, I, I have no <laughs> idea how that's going to go. Absolutely. But it's going to be cool. It's going to be awesome. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. And at least it's going to be cool. And as long as we know that this is the community and the great thing is that we've spoken to every single one here, one of you, majority of you guys, uh, and we know who you are and we want to build stuff that really helps you and I know Ernst and Wayne and Johans and all of them are also as passionate to board really cool things with you guys. So please let us know. Talk. We all board it with you. Cool. Guys, um, I think that's it. I think we're on time. We are minutes ahead of time. Hey, so we're on budget. So uh, if there's hey, anything else, uh, guys, please feel free to, if you want to stay around, you want to chat some more, you want to show some videos, I'm happy to stay. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Have a brilliant night. Um, the, yeah, the rest of your night. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. Sure. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Guys. Thanks, Bye. everyone.